Hey guys, this is David with Average Joe Investing, and as I'm sure you're aware, a new month starts this week, so let's take a look at the stocks I'll be adding to our Robinhood portfolio this month. Now, one thing you're going to notice with kind of my stock picks this month, we're kind of going with a little bit of a theme. So last week when I kind of started that portfolio and kind of started that experiment, we were kind of going with stuff I was going to hold long term that paid a little bit of a dividend. Well, this month, this entire month, we're going to be kind of focusing on stocks that are a little more accessible to a lot of people. So as I'm doing these trades, making $30, $40 or whatever, these are going to be stocks we can buy a share with every single time I do that. So three out of these four shares are actually under 15 bucks right now. And then the fourth share is still under 40. So remember that just because these stocks are cheaper doesn't mean that they're bad stocks. It just a lot of times means that either it's an up and coming stock or it could just be one that the company's issued a ton of shares. But anyways, guys, let's take a look at the four stocks I'm buying in September of 2017. So besides just kind of taking a look at cheaper stocks this month, we're definitely going to be looking at kind of long term holds. So the four stocks I'm going to talk about today, none of them are ones that I'm going to turn around and sell a month from now. These are all companies I plan on buying and holding for quite a while. So up first is going to be AT&T. And we've talked about this one before on the channel. I love the mobile industry. I love what they're doing. It's definitely an industry where you see a lot of mergers, acquisitions, things like that. And while yes, it is down 2.4% just kind of on the yearly basis, at times it has been up there, you know, 6, 7% there. And in the last five years overall, it is up. And keep in mind that in these numbers here, this is just the difference in the actual stock price itself. It does not take into account the dividend payouts, which are pretty good on AT&T. So I'll definitely be adding a couple more positions here with AT&T, kind of as we go throughout this month. And if you guys don't follow it, this is one of those ones, as you saw there, I only have one share. I've been kind of investing in these guys. I'm gonna start pushing money into them in our Rags to Riches series, where I take $1,000 and see how much I can grow it. But again, I like AT&T just for a long term. They're not a company that's gonna you know, quadruple value or anything like that, but 4.5% dividend yield, under an 18 PE ratio, which is right where you wanna be when you're talking about kind of the mobile industry, things like that. And as you guys can see there, pretty good earnings per share. I think Q4 is gonna be a little bit better this year because again, we're getting into late Q3, early Q4. This is when you're gonna start seeing the new devices and kind of the new things coming out. And beyond just, you know, say the new iPhone or anything like that, which, you know, they put out a new one every year, that's not gonna make a big difference. One thing they have coming out is something that, you know, Samsung and a couple other companies have in the past. And that's, they're getting a little more into the wearable tech, which are gonna be the watches and things like that that have 4G connectivity. So while yes, that's obviously gonna help companies like Apple, that's also gonna help companies like AT&T because that's an add-on service that people don't already have. You know, if you buy your service for your iPhone, you still have to add another line to your account to get your smartwatch to also be able to use the 4G network. So that's one of those things I'm definitely looking actually at a fair amount of growth here for AT&T, kind of going to Q4. And then obviously we're still kind of keeping an eye on what happens with Time Warner Cable and some of these other mergers acquisitions that happen. But again, all of those are things that would actually grow the stock a little bit. This is one of those ones you just buy, hold it for pretty much the rest of your life and collect dividends and just kind of see what happens with the company. So first up is going to be AT&T this month. So our second stock is going to be another one of those companies that aren't going to go four, five, six times in value this month. And trust me, numbers three and four, definitely going to be a little bit more in that category. But our first two here are definitely ones you buy, you hold forever. You don't really care what happens, you know, if the stock changes three, four, five percent in a year, not that big of a deal. So up next, we're talking about Ford down actually 8.39% this year. And just like AT&T, there were times when it was actually up on the year. And right now trading at under $11. I absolutely love this stock. And again, over the last five years here, you'll see about 41% growth. But again, just like AT&T, that's not really the number we're looking at. While yes, that kind of growth is also nice. The big story here is definitely going to be the dividend yield. Almost 5% dividend yield. And if we take a look there, they're beating earnings per share right now and they're actually having some pretty decent numbers going on. Obviously down the road, you kind of have to kind of see what Tesla does and how quickly Ford kind of reacts to smart cars, things like that. But again, this is just one of those companies, they've been around forever. 
It's kind of misleading that, you know, the stocks are $10 a share right now. It's just because there's a bunch issued. It's definitely worth every penny of $10, $11 a share. And again, you're just gonna kind of collect these dividends over time. Not a super flashy company. We're not gonna, you know, go from that $43 billion market cap to 500 billion anytime soon. But again, just one of those you add in there, you collect those dividends and you reinvest it elsewhere. Okay, so the first two there were kind of a little bit boring for some of you guys because they're just dividend stocks, nothing really is gonna happen. But my last two, I promise you, they're ones that I definitely look at as a growth company. They're not gonna be these long-term hold dividend yield ones. They're gonna be these companies that I think are honestly gonna grow two, three, four times the size of what they are right now. So first up is gonna be LG Display. If we take a look here, they're actually down about 1% for the year. But at one point, just a couple months ago, they were actually up almost 20%. In the last five years, up 15.76%. And again, just recently, they would have been up like over 40%. But again, guys, this is one of those times that honestly, I'm not afraid that, oh no, this company's going downhill. I think it's one of those times that you kind of buy stuff when it's on sale. And right now, I definitely see LG Display as being a stock that's on sale right now. So if we take a look down here, it's about a $9 billion company right now. So it's nothing huge, but that's good. It means that the shares are a little bit cheaper for us. It's definitely a more accessible company for pretty much the masses. I know a lot of you guys have, you know, 15 bucks you can throw into a stock. And if we take a look at there, a lot of times we're like, cool, you know, if there's a dividend up around 5%, that's phenomenal. How about this? How about a PE ratio below five? That's absolutely crazy, guys. You know, I like these other companies at 18, 19 PE ratios. We're looking at a company at under five. And while it's true, they don't really have a dividend payout that's massive. This shows zero. They actually do pay usually one time a year, a relatively low number. But again, that's not why we're buying this stock. We're not buying this one to collect the dividend every quarter and reinvest it. We're buying this one for the growth potential. At under 5 PE, if we take a look here, their earnings per share are absolutely killing it right now. I mean, they're getting better and better every single quarter over quarter right now. So the other thing that you, you can't really see here on Robinhood is if you take a look at their actual balance sheet, their assets are much higher at the end of 2016 than they were at the end of 2015. And just kind of taking a look at what this company is doing right now, I think that's a trend we're going to see continuing here in 2017. So you know what? If I can buy something at a good value, I'm going to do it. I think LG Display is actually on sale right now. I think it's a pretty cheap stock. So definitely kind of be watching those rags to riches videos because we will definitely be adding LPL to the portfolio this month. So right here, the very last one we're going to look at this month, my number four is going to be Callaway. And for those of you guys that don't know, this is kind of a golf company. They sell a lot of golf balls, golf clubs. They have a little bit of apparel, but we'll kind of talk about a little bit why I really like these guys. But if we take a look here, up 18% in the last year. In the last five years, 141%. So already great growth there. But this isn't one of those companies that I think is done growing. I think this is one that's going to just keep growing. I don't see them going anywhere that way. If we scroll down here, just like the last one, good PE ratio, four point or 7.44. So again, under 10, that's a great PE ratio to be taking a look at. We definitely have a growing earnings per share here. They've been beating gold, they've been beating estimates lately, which is fantastic. And as we can see there, they're beating it by a fair little margin there. So consistently beating their numbers, growing earnings per share, low PE ratio, and not only that, let's talk about a few more of those things that you won't find on the Robinhood app. If we take a look at net sales over the last year, it's a big reason why this company is growing. So again, they're up 18% in the last year in terms of stock price, but their net sales are actually up 24% over last year's numbers. Their operating income is actually up 135%. Their club sales, so just, you know, the irons, woods, putters, things like that, up 64% over LY. And then the other thing that's kind of just hitting recently, and one of the reasons why I really like this, is they've been kind of that company that's in the golfing world and you know the balls, the clubs, things like that. Now they're actually getting into a little bit more of the apparel side. And they just acquired a company called Travis Matthew for $125 million. And that's projected to add another $60 million just in the first year that's owned by Callaway. 
So again, just one of those companies that was growing fantastic on their own, and now they just acquired another business that's also growing. And take a look there, at under $14, 100% accessible stock, almost everybody can buy the stock right now. You know, I get the companies like your Googles, your Amazons at $1,000, not everybody can buy shares of that. This is a company that's growing and should continue to grow that pretty much every one of your average Joe, everyday people can definitely invest in this. So for me personally, Callaway is my number one favorite stock going into September. So definitely, if you keep an eye on our series here, I will be adding a fair number of Callaway stocks this month. So as I said, this month we're kind of going with accessible stocks. We're gonna to try to build up our portfolio and get a fair number of shares this month. So anyways guys, let me know what stocks you're investing in this month and let me know what you guys think about this month's picks. But anyways, I will see you guys soon.